In this video, I'm going to answer a question that we get a lot. What it's like to live off-grid in the desert, especially in the wintertime. Got my beanie on, it's a little bit cool this morning, so we're going to talk about the power, how we do that, how we do the water, and then what's going on with sewer, how we just flush our toilets and have everything just kind of go away. Very different from the way that things are run in cities, of course. So what is it like to live off grid? Well, first thing is first, we have solar, beautiful, renewable, renewable, silent energy. Solar is our main power source for the house. We have two um, poles back there with solar panels mounted on top. We have about 3,700 watts of solar on rotatable and tiltable solar poles that run underneath the ground and into our house to a battery component system. And this is what that component system looks like. It's an Outback Radian series component with a 4,000 watt inverter. Solar comes in from the outside into our component system through our charge controller over here to our four lithium phosphate batteries. And combined, all four batteries add up to 300 amp hours of 48 volt power. The 300 amp hours may not seem like a lot for a whole house, but being 48 volts, it provides plenty of power about 99% of the time. On a normal day here, even in the winter when we get less sunlight, we're at 100% charge by about 9 or 10 a.m. The sun comes up about 6.30, maybe closer to 7, depending on the time of year. So it, these batteries charge fast through our charge controller. They stay at 100% as long as we have full sun. But even if we don't have full sun, clouds, having clouds, which are rare out here, will not exactly destroy our power generating capabilities. Speaking of the sun, it's about ready to come up. Actually, it's already up. So the power is something that we did right after we first moved in, and we have been very, very, very happy with our solar system, no problems at all. The second component, so power is taken care of. The second component is water, and that is something that we've struggled a little bit more with. In this area, there's not exactly water lines running to your house, like in a city, so you have to provide your own water. People out here do that either with a well or with rainwater collection and just doing it yourself. So thus far, we have been doing the rainwater collection system, and we collect water into two different 1,250-gallon freshwater holding tanks. And water from this tank just runs through this wrapped and insulated, for the most part, pipe into the house where it goes through a filtration process before we actually use it. And through PVC pipes, we capture water from the roof so the rain comes down, hits the roof. It's actually a great rainwater catchment roof because it's metal, it has those grooves, water just runs down really easily into our gutter system through the PVC pipe and into our fresh water tank directly. And that's how we have been filling our water. But as I'm sure you remember, Monsoon season last year did not provide a lot of rain. We were very frustrated with the amount of rain we got. Um, so that prompted us to do two things. One, add a second tank of 1,250 gallons, and we equalize both of those tanks through a PVC line underneath the surface and through gravity. That equalization process just happens automatically. This one fills up, the water slowly runs into that other one and vice versa but we only directly fill this tank from our rain catchment system. And then this water here 
slowly filters into that tank there. So when it does rain, we get to capture more water now. However, the second thing we're doing and that's coming up is we've decided to get a well and we will keep these tanks, but we'll just refill these tanks with the well so we never have to worry about that again. And inside the house, the water runs in here through our water pump, which is just a three gallon a minute RV water pump. Works just fine. Up through a PEX system that we built, through a couple of filters, and then from there, this stuff runs into the house. And these two filters clean the water enough for us to use it at our sinks and in the showers and things like that. But before we drink the water, we filter it a third time through a Berkey that sits on our counter in the refrigerator. So we just keep filling up the Berkey from the faucet and then we drink the water from the Berkey for just that extra assurance that the water we're drinking, especially because it's rainwater, so you have no idea what's in it, is fresh and clean. And we use a tankless hot water heater. So whenever we turn the hot water on from our faucets, this thing immediately kicks on, uses propane, heats up the water, sends it to the faucet that we're using. Works very well. It keeps us from having to store and keep hot a lot of water just sitting in a water tank. And one of the tricks that we use to save water is whenever we want hot water at the sink, we put a pitcher underneath the faucet, turn it all the way on, capture the cold water before the hot water actually makes it out there. Um, and then we just pour that cold water into the Berkey, which we have to do every once in a while anyway. So we just keep our drinking water filled as we need our hot water. So works great. And you might be wondering how we heat the house. Usually houses might have whole heating systems throughout which use power. We don't have that in this house. It's not the way the house was built. We use this gas powered ventless fireplace, hi Penny, to provide the house, the heat for the immediate house here, the, the interior, which works really, really well. It's ventless. But we have a ceiling fan on to help the air circulate so there's no problems with carbon, mono carbon monoxide or anything like that. It works very effectively. We usually turn this thing on every morning and sometimes at night, depending on how cold it is outside. But for my office, this heat doesn't tend to get all the way out there. So we have another solution. This is a Wave 6 catalytic heater, hooks up through propane to our propane source out back. And this is a very, very efficient way of heating a space about the size of this. And both the Cat 6 catalytic heater and the fireplace use zero power. No power whatsoever. They just use propane, which we have a huge tank. We've only had to get it once when we first moved in, and that was like almost two years ago. So it lasts a long time. All right. It's time for the shades and the removal of the beanie. One of my favorite times of the day. Okay, so we've talked about power, we've talked about water, but now how do we flush all of our crap away? Usually in a the city, there's a sewer system. You just flush and it all just kind of goes away into water treatment systems and nobody really knows really where, it, yeah, it just, it, just, it just, it goes away. But out here, of course, you don't have that luxury in many places. So instead of a sewer system, most people here have a septic system. And I showed you a septic system of a friend of ours in one of our previous videos. So if you want to get the details about how a typical septic system works, take a look at that. But the high level overview is this. Your wastewater runs from your house through PVC pipes, usually into a holding tank here, which you can see there's a manhole cover here and also one here underneath all of that all of that wood you can take this up and literally see into the septic system and all the sludge and all the nastiness and what happens is your solid waste sinks to the bottom the sludge just kind of comes up to the top and floats at the top and in between you have all the the liquid waste so your number one from the toilet your showers your sinks all of that just kind of sits in the middle and that gets filtered out into a drain field which for us is out here and through a series of perforated PVC pipes, that liquid waste just kind of filters and seeps back into the ground. And that's why you won't have to 
pump out your septic system every year because your number the, the liquid waste just goes back into the ground it leaches back into the ground so you might hear a drain field called a leach field same difference it's leaching the liquid waste back into the earth leaving all the nastiness in your septic tank and we have a 1000 gallon septic tank which is a little bit overkill for a house that small but it's better to go big than to go too small i guess right so yeah we're we're good for a while and the one last thing i'll talk about is our propane which is how our heat works we have a 500 pound propane tank right there which is way bigger than we need most people out here have 250 pound tanks we thought that's what we were or, or we thought that's what people used out here we thought it was a 500 gallon tank and not a 250 gallon tank so that's what we ordered anyway this thing is huge it's going to take us years to go through the entire tank with our usage so we don't really have to worry about filling it up too often but for our heat and our appliances and all that we have this delivered every couple years and it works really really great for us and for the most part, that's it. I mean, it gets cold out here. We're in the high desert. We're at about 4,500 feet. So it gets into the teens and 20s during the winter. And we don't have the heat running all night. We don't have the fireplace on, but our house is made of concrete block, of cinder block. So it's very, very well insulated. Usually when we get up in the morning, temperatures are in the low 60s inside. Even if it's 15 degrees outside, temperatures will still be in the low 60s, maybe high 50s on like the cold coldest nights inside. So we just flip on the fireplace and warm that sucker up in about, I don't know, a half hour or so. So the winter is actually really, really easy. Even though I don't like the cold, and you know I don't like the cold, the winter is really easy to spend out here in an off-grid place. Guess whose birthday it is today? It's yours. It's mine. Happy birthday. Thank you. And you're cooking, right? Because you love it. You love to cook. And I really want carnitas for dinner. You want carnitas. So, that's what we're going to have. And that brings me to my final point. Even in an off-grid place, you have an off-grid kitchen. It's the same kind of kitchen that any home would have with a microwave and a refrigerator and a stove. You can make anything, anything you want in an off-grid kitchen. Kitchen. You don't have to be hooked up to utilities to make some of the best meals and drinks that you've ever had. It also doesn't help that you married a culinary genius, as I did. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about off-grid living in the winter. Maybe we'll do another one in the summer when it's like 110 degrees outside. And the AC, how we cool this place is very much different. It uses a lot more power. Anyway, we'll talk about that later in the year. But for now, I will bid you farewell. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.